Now, let's speak again to Ksenia pavlovic Makatir, who's a journalist frequently covering the White House. Ksenia, we were thinking by now that we would be talking about results. There's been a delay. What do you know about that delay? Well, no one really knows anything about delay except that something is going on and uh, Democratic uh, officials, they say that uh, this is something that is eating up the time. It may be uh, the reason because, you know, uh, this uh, new accounting uh, system is, um, is novel this year because we have uh, a popular vote count as well as a delegate vote. And I would imagine that this may be the case. Or maybe there was some problem or it's taking longer time with realignment. So we are... We need to see what is going uh, to happen. I would not like to speculate because I, I'm afraid that this delay may cause some people to, you know, come up with some conspiracy theories and we should just trust the system and uh, the democratic process in this nation and see what is going to come up, hopefully very soon. Yeah, there are so much focus on this moment after months and months of campaigning and the expectation that we would get results now. And here at this media centre, you can feel uh, the buzz from journalists who were hoping to have some meat to get into now to actually talk about some results. But we are getting a sense, though, that the individual precincts have their results. So there is sort of anecdotal conversation about the way things are going, which suggests that perhaps for Joe Biden, it may not be a great night. That is very possible. Uh, I would imagine that that can be the case, that maybe some new candidate emerge or Bernie Sanders is winning. I really do not know. You don't know. No one knows. But uh, that's the problem, that they are allowing for this to happen. And now many people are going to speculate. And, you know, tomorrow we have a State of the Union. Um, the next day, the impeachment is uh, coming to a close. And you really need to think about, you know, how is this going to reflect on the new cycle? Uh, how is this going to reflect the American democracy, American elections? Too many news are happening uh, right now. And the fact that we still do not have results doesn't look very great. Obviously, the candidates themselves so focused on results coming out, but also Donald Trump, the White House, very interested in how this is all going to shake down. Donald Trump has his nicknames ready for all of the candidates. But who do you think he's most focused on, most worried about emerging as that front runner? I would think that he's most concerned with Bernie Sanders because he knows that Bernie has a movement behind him that is very similar. He's also looking at the working class or blue collar uh, voters. So I think his biggest concern is Bernie Sanders because they're very similar in terms of the um, type of the leadership they have or type of the candidate they have. It's basically the age of the outsider one may, may argue, but also he's concerned with Mike Bloomberg because of the money he has. And it's very possible that if uh, Joe Biden fails in his attempt to win the nomination and becomes the president of the United States, that the that DNC is going to hope that Mike Bloomberg is going to come in and save them uh, because he has lots of money. He has political experience. He has really good policies. But the problem with Mike Bloomberg is that you cannot really connect to Mike Bloomberg. So I believe that uh, uh, President Trump should be most concerned by an opponent uh, who can invoke in a voter a sense of connection. Personal politics is still going to play a large part in this election. So we have Iowa now, which is a sort of first step, and then it's all about the conventions in July when they are essentially crowned as the candidate. But we're really going to know, possibly quite a long time before that, who the Democratic presidential candidate will be. Possibly end of April we're getting a sense of, that we really could know who it is? Depends, you know, who you ask. If we look at the past seven years... Today's winner, tonight's winner, should be the one who is going to win the nomination and possibly become the new president of the United States. But if you ask Joe Biden, because he was not projected to do well tonight already, he's more focusing on New Hampshire, uh, Nevada, Nevada uh, South Carolina, and so and so. So it depends really how this uh, you know, voter turnout come uh, in, uh, in the end, because high 
a turnout uh, means that maybe Bernie Sanders uh, can can win the election. So it's really, really hard to tell how, how soon we are going to know because we have lots of also unpredictable voters. And if we look at the previous elections in 2016, the polls failed us. So people are not really comfortable still to tell us who they want to vote for. And that is something that we also need to factor into the... Um, the sentiments of uh, the electorate in America in 2020. And in terms of tonight and how things are looking at this stage, it, this feels pretty unusual not to have results to talk about at the moment, but it does seem, from what we know so far, that things are going as expected in terms of younger people going for Bernie Sanders, older people for Joe <laughs> Biden, and as you alluded to just then, it really is about the turnout, and Bernie Sanders has said if that's high, he thinks that will go in his favour. This is what has been the case for him. Uh, Bernie Sanders is all, always, you know, known that if he has a slow turnout, he's not doing well. If he has a high turnout, he's definitely going to win this. Um, so I, I would expect to see good results for Bernie Sanders tonight. But I really do not want to jump off the cliff and say that before really seeing what is going on. And we've talked about electability and, and anxieties that people have over that. So what we really mean there is people who may feel very drawn to Elizabeth Warren, for example. They may like her policies, the way she's connected with voters. But for one reason or another, they may not believe that she can beat Donald Trump. So they will be driven more by who they believe can beat Donald Trump or who the consensus is can beat Donald Trump. Do you think that ultimately that will be the driving factor tonight? It must be the driving factor. I don't see any other way. If it is some other way, then uh, some, someone is missing to send the right message. It is not about policy, because even if you look what happened in Brexit in your country, you're now finding out that many people didn't vote for the policies, but they just wanted to feel respected, that their point of view has been respected. And uh, maybe this is something that the uh, United States can learn from, that they need to come up with some way to connect to the voters, to read the sentiments and the mood of the society. And from what I'm seeing here in the United States and following the Trump administration closely, I'm seeing that no matter how bad his policy is, he's still able to keep his base. So maybe, again, I'm repeating what I said before, but I think it's also true that a candidate who has a strong grassroots movement behind him can match the um, the, the movement that Trump, uh, President Trump has. And that can be a winning strategy. I don't see that for Mike Bloomberg. I feel that my Bloomberg is just some a little bit different version of uh, of Joe Biden but maybe you know it's time for some real change in, in the American system in American politics in in the way how politics is communicated you have so many young voters you know wanting to vote for Warren Biden and why is that because I think this new generation that is still very much younger than we are they want to be socially responsible, even if they go to work for corporate uh, companies, they want to work for an employer who is socially responsible. So I think economic justice, social justice, racial justice, those are still big issues here in the United States. There's so much racial inequality here still. So those are some issues that uh, can really win over uh, when it comes to Senia, next. Senia, I'm so sorry. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time. So we keep saying it, but hopefully it will happen. Results imminent in the next few moments. Do join us back here in Iowa.